It's Saturday, January 19th, and it's Sunshine Millions Day, the first of four big weekends where there are big races every weekend, including the last weekend of the four when I'll be in Arkansas. Let's see how Sunshine Millions Day turns out. Gates closed, all set. Racing in the Sunshine Millions Stadium Marathon. Got my first winner of the day in the first at Aqueduct it was a maiden special weight. The three year olds and I like number one fan girl on the rail. There were a lot of reasons that you could go with a lot of different horses in here, but she had had back to back just blistering bullets. And her last time out, she had lost to a very promising Chad Brown filly. So I doubled the bet on number one fan girl, who was clear on the far turn and then was caught. Stretch duel! The challenge fangirl for the lead and grace town is on the outside of fangirl putting a head in front but fangirl has something left coming back again at the rail so it's fangirl and grace town and the two of them are right together at the 16th pole fangirl with a head in front grace town all out on the outside fangirl grace town the two of them come to the wire look like fangirl by a nostril oh yeah got the head bob on the photo finish and i was on the board Got back nearly $30. The third at Gulfstream was my first winner of the day here locally. It was a claiming race going six and a half furlongs. And the question today was if Body High, number one, was ready to run his best. Because he'd rattled off four wins and five starts last summer at odds of two to five, two to five, one to five, three to five, and nine to five. Those kind of efforts in this field would win. He had Irad Ortiz on top, went right to the front, but on the far turn, the pressing 8 to 1 second place horse took over. I read swung outside. Oh, one last lunge. Lexi's doll, two in front of Flying Girl. Ledecky trying to get underway from the back with Kitty and Hill as they round the far turn. Less than three eighths of a mile to go. There goes Bella. Now has a clear advantage. She nailed it as second. Body High is still caught. Carefully ridden in third. Song of Melody, meanwhile, under a whip ride from Sayas, gaining ground from fourth through a 46 second half mile. Tormented Oro is fifth as they wheel for home. There goes Bella, set down for the drive by Romero Mirage and two and a half on top. Body High takes another run out her second down the center. And Song of Melody, eighth of a mile. There goes Bella, two and a half. Body high, lunging late. Body high, there goes Bella. There goes Bella. Body high, final push. It's a oh, first win of the day at Gulfstream. Body high, just up in time. Oh yeah, two wins today. And at the fairgrounds in their opener, it is Road to the Derby Day. This is the day that Jim Anderson and I were there last year. I uh, expected to have a lot of wind and rain today. Only one race on the turf is left. Luckily, I handicapped for races to come off the turf. But the opener was an allowance of non-winners of one, and there was no guarantee that number eight flashy brew would run back to the buyer that he'd won with on his maiden. But if he ran back to that today, he'd be a decisive winner. Apparently the crowd thought so, sent him off at 6 to 5, right to the front. Followed by Tents on top. We trail back to wide Trace Midnight Moon with Bogan's Reward. Release the Beast and last as they stream for home, Neon Sky. They turn for home in the Saturday opener. Half mile 46.27 seconds. Flashy Brew into the spinal for long, leads by 6. Shermanator. On the outside, Trace Midnight Moon and Tents on top goes up between horses, but close to home, it's Flashy Brew with the Rongeroo. Flashy Brew sells home in the opener by five and a half. And that makes three today. The six at Gulfstream was the second of the Sunshine Million Stakes. This was the Sunshine Millions Turf. I like number three, Big Changes. He was going out for Michael Maker. He was the H5 program favorite, but he was cross-centered in a turf stakes race at the fairgrounds where it is road to the derby day. With all the weather out there, I figured he'd be starting here, but then, I don't know, he was 9-2 at the fairgrounds, which is home base. Thought he looked much better in here, and sure enough, this is where he sent him with Javier Castellano on board. Stalked the pace in the far turn, and Javier let him go. Three lengths from first to last.
fast, and now the pace quickens. There goes Class and Cash to overhaul. He's bankable. Immediately tackled by big changes. Archer Road swings into the clear. Outside and salute the Colonel. Second mate at the back as they run for home. Class and Cash, who comes away with the lead. Big changes. Takes a shot from second. Now the center Archer Road Big changes, wins the Sunshine Million, Turf. Big changes, wins the Sunshine Million, Turf. Double the bet on my second winner at Gulfstream. Double the bet and gone back almost $20. The six that Tampa was a maiden special weight on the turf, and you can make a case for a lot of the horses in here, or make no case at all for any of them. But on the outside was number 10, Digital Age, and he was going for Chad Brown. You had to wonder, with all the maiden special weight races on the turf here at Gulfstream, why was Chad sending him to Tampa? And then there was the outside post. But with the Clarevich Stables as the owner, and Brown is the trainer, first time starter, he just looked much the best in the crowd betting that way. He was even money and dropped down to four to five right before post time. The gates open, hesitated, seemed to jump in the air. Then when he took off, he broke outsides. Now he was four or five wide into the first turn, wide down the back stretch. Finally got only four wide, making a bid on the turn as they turned for home. He was steadied, swung outside. Racing room as they swing around the far turn. Three eighths of a mile still to run. Wind mission on the outside. Flew out and is still there. Henry's bend is putting in a run. Deep poem on the outside. Two lengths farther back to Crypto Gold. And up on the outside is Digital Age. And they swing into the stretch and it's absolutely wide open. That's one mission still the leader. Flew out and is toward the rail now, second. Way out on the outside. Here comes Digital Age. Absolutely flying on late. And Crypto Gold is from between horses. Digital Age flies on by now to gain the lead. Oh, much the best. Double the bet on Digital Age. Watch that guy down the road. He looks special. And that was win number six for me. The tenth at Gulfstream was the Sunshine Millions Philly and Mare Turf. On Claiming Crown Day, I liked graded stakes winner Starship Jubilee, even though she disappointed in the Claiming Crown Tierra last year. Sure enough, at short odds, she disappointed. So she came back here to defend her title, and she again was drawn wide in post 13, and I'm like, hmm, not so sure this is a good idea. And then I started looking at her, and I found it interesting that last year she ran in a graded stakes race in Woodbine, ran well without winning, came here, lost the Tierra, won the Sunshine Mill and Philly Mare Turf. This year, ran in a great stake at Woodbine, ran well, didn't win, in the Tierra, didn't win at short odds. Today, despite the post, Javier Castellano, I thought could get some kind of good positioning, so I tripled the bet. She's caught very wide in the first turn, but down the back stretch, she was tracking in third, and then he said go, and oh my, Less than three-eighths of a mile to go. They've got to Madame Uno. Starship Jubilee, three wide and up for the lead. Pacara tries to run with her front second, thinking Cowtown third, then Southern Sis and Bitter. It's now the favorite Starship Jubilee to take charge of the moment by three. Back to second is Pacara, down the center, Bitter Corps, Shannon Astro, and Mrs. Ramona G. Back all three wide and up for the lead. Starship Jubilee! Philly and Mayor Turf. Sunshine Millions, Philly and Mare Turf, Starship Jubilee, my third winner here, my second Sunshine Millions stakes win. Triple the bet, triple the bet, that's my sixth win, third here, second stakes winner on Sunshine Millions Day. In the finale, the 12th of Gulfstream, I like Mission Driven from the George Navarro barn when he had come to his barn and from SoCal this summer, won back to back for $16,000. Well, today he was back in for $16,000, looked out of it at the eighth pole, came flying under Jose Ortiz. The chamber who's trying to weave through traffic. 
Underway from the back is Bingo Pango Bongo. Still held up is Neo Classic and Good and Proper is last as they run for the top of the stretch. Tweet Kitten now puts a neck on top. Toward the inside, Street Code is there second. Rop and Reed into the clear from third. Dama Center and coming on late is Mission Driven. Weaving through horses and Francesco Flyer. Eighth of a mile to go. Tweet Kitten powers to a narrow lead, but Street Code is extra. Mission Driven down the stand side. He's lunging late. He's going past the ball and he's in time. Mission Driven. Doubled the bet over $40. Woo, nice way to finish the day. My fourth winner at Gulfstream. Race 7 at Santa Anita is a maiden special weight for three-year-olds, and Bob Baffert will be in the winner circle. The question is, will he be on number with number 7 Dressman, the 9-5 to five program favorite, who's a first-time starter, or number 6 Scalper, who I had on opening day and just didn't fire that day. You could give him an excuse for his start, but I'm going to go with Dressman, number 7, in the 7th at Santa Anita, a maiden special weight. Kyle touched on the inside, and Dressman now moves up to take second. And he's coming nicely after jumping through hoops. Scalper in the clear now. Red Cap moves up to claim third. Norski's at the back of the pack now with a good report outside of him. Approaching the quarter pole, jumping through hoops at the rail. But Desmond looming up nicely, though. Desmond on the outside takes the lead. Jumping through hoops is trying to fight back. But Desmond now lengthens his stride and opens up to Scalpers in the center of the track. But as they come past the eighth pole, Pratt gives Desmond a reminder, and he takes off. Big, powerful strides from Desmond, a good-looking son of Union Rags, who will rock in his debut. He wins by eight widening lengths. The ninth at Santa Anita marks the return to races of the two-time Breeders' Cup Sprint champ, number seven, Roy H. He's using this as a prep for the Dubai Group 1 Golden Shaheen, where he ran third last year. And he was much the best off the layoff last year at 1 to 5. I think it's similar today. He is a triple investment for me. A half length back in second. It's a perfect trip for Roy H., who moves up very easily in third. A gap of six lengths to Awesome Anywhere, followed by Kentucky and touched by Autism. Three furlongs remaining, Conquest Tsunami the leader. Roy H, though, is coming very smartly on the outside, and Roy H takes the lead without being asked to do so. St. Joe Bay is three lengths behind. They're followed by Awesome Anywhere. Top of the stretch, Paco Lopez has done his job. It's up to Roy H, and he's in front by two. Conquest Tsunami Kentaka finishing strongly in third, but as they come past the 16th pole, it's Roy H, a magnificent sprinter, and he'll go back to back in the Palace Verdes in what was simply a workout. The 12th at the fairgrounds is the DF Kenner, a six furlong sprint, and number six win time is my pick. In fact, he is my bet of the day at the fairgrounds. He'll be really short odds, and in his 10 starts, he has seven wins. The three races that he didn't win, he was second and third to Whitmore, who's a multiple graded stakes winner, and those were at Oaklawn, which is where Whitmore runs his best races. I think that he just looks much the best. He's six for nine at the distance and five, four, one, and oh, here at the fairgrounds, and of the 123 races run by the rivals facing him, none of those races would top the last four starts the speed figures earned by wind time. He's the bet of the day in the 12th, number six, wind time. State puts the come around spikes on, the drop back at the inside and Cowboy Karma is last. Under a quarter of a mile to go, half mile in 47.12 seconds. It's wind time, the Illinois bred who just leans at the inside. Valentine trying to get past wind time as they come to the final 16th and control stick and Colonel's dark temper. It's wind time, Valentine, and on the outside control sticks. It's wind time and Marcelo Pedrosa. Wind time with a hat trick of sticks wins and a fair. Next week is Pegasus Cup week. It'll be a big day out here with tons of stakes races. And with the $9 million Pegasus World Cup Invitational and the new $7 million Pegasus World Cup Turf. Looking forward to being out here with my buddy Keith.